It was over a year ago now that we replayed a game that I initially had a lot of pain and suffering while playing. It was the beginning of the fall of the next generation. People were claiming, oh, this is a next-gen experience, and then faltering. Games like Watch Dogs and Knack bo both symbolize how wrong we all were for believing those things. Sure, the games looked pretty, like the Order 1886, and maybe they played alright, but they were definitely not a next-gen experience. Well, let's talk about one of the most controversial games in this similar context. Assassin's Creed Unity. We streamed Assassin's Creed in May of last year, 2019, still on the YouTube channel. Once we get past the YouTube channel games, then we'll move on to the Twitch stuff, but for right now we're doing YouTube games that we streamed. So Assassin's Creed came out November 11th of 2014, and like I said, this one was created for the next generation of gaming. Uh, essentially, this game was supposed to be the next gen Assassin's Creed experience that we were all were hoping for and talking about. What ended up happening was the game that came to the older consoles called Assassin's Creed Rogue ended up actually being a lot better than what uh, than what Unity was, which was a lackluster, boring glitch fest that became one of the biggest and most popular memes out there for some time with just how crazy the glitches would get. Ubisoft Montreal was the developer and they worked overtime to try and fix this game and give it some justice. Me personally, the glitches that I ran into during my initial run of the game, AI characters floating into the sky and being stiff animations in T-poses or in whatever pose they were doing at the time, but still walking forward. I was also able to climb out of the city. <laughs> I was literally able to like climb an invisible building up until I got to the outbox. Also, and this happened to a lot of people, there's a mission where you can backstab someone over crates pretty early on in the game. Essentially what happens is you backstab the person, pull them over the crates, and then you and the person glitch through the ground and fall for what seems like forever, but it's like fi a five minute fall until you finally end up dying. This and a lot more is what's, what was wrong with the game back when I played it. Playing it in May of 2019, I found that a lot of the glitches had been, you know, taken away from the game. The game played fine, uh, glitch-wise. I didn't run into any facial glitches, AI glitches, anything like that that I was talking about before, which made me relatively happy. I said, wow, the game's actually pretty playable now. I also ran into a mission that was... There's like a side mission, a rift mission, and a side mission, or no, a shop right on top of each other, so you couldn't get to the other you couldn't get to the rift mission because the shop was over it and I was you couldn't get anywhere that was also fixed as well which I made sure to go back and look for there were a few goofy things that happened like there was a few times where you know NPCs would be standing on top of a shoe a shoe uh, holder whatever you want to call it whatever they call it in France back in the revolutionary times um, and those things were goofy, they made me kind of chuckle, you know, it was something that was game-breaking. What was game-breaking, though, was the free-running. The free-running is still pretty messed up. Um, there are several times throughout our playthrough where I would get stuck doing a mission because instead of Arno climbing up, he would climb straight, or he would climb down. Having two different buttons for going up and down is a great idea. But, for some reason, there's every so often where you'll be holding RT and A, and you'll just start running down. Or, if you press RT and B, you'll just immediately drop, instead of going forward and flowing with how the landscape goes, or how the, the 
the platform you set up, and you'll just kind of drop immediately on a, on, on a house. There are several missions where it, it really messed me up, including a lot of trailing missions, which, you know, trailing missions in Assassin's Creed take forever. And then this one is there is no expect, you know, there's no ex exception. Um, but there's one where there's multiple bridges and you're kind of going along the coast of a river. And for some reason, Arno decided to go below the platform that I wanted to, to climb onto, thus ending, you know, de desynchronizing de what I was doing. Also, during the beginning of the game, which I'll say this, the medieval beginning of the game is pretty fun. Um, it sets up, it doesn't set anything up in the main story, like, at all, except for the Sword of Eden, whatever you want to, I don't remember what it's called, the Sword of Eden. But other than that, there's really nothing about it that's really that impressive, but it is a cool scenario, and it, re it really reminded me of the original Assassin's Creed game, which I'm pretty sure is what they were going for. I do like how they kind of, you know, the, the Animus is now kind of like a gaming system, so you're a person playing this new... You know, gaming system, Animus type game, and you're, you know, you can see all the different Assassin's Creed games, and some ones that maybe were in, in works, but they never ended up showing up, like the Jazz one, <laughs> which I don't know, I probably would have been in Louisiana back in, like, I don't know, the, the 40s or something like that, I have no clue. Um, but it was interesting to see, like, a, a page like that, and then you click on the first one, because it's the only one you can click on. Um, and I, I really like that setup, but the setup of the future stuff is not that great. I mean, even though there's nothing to do in the future, personally, you do get a lot of cutscenes and stuff like that that just, uh, they just keep droning on about things you don't really care about. And I think for an Assassin's Creed nowadays, I think that they, I mean, they still do it where they have you go into the future, like, Desmond style. But now that Desmond's not in the series anymore, you've kind of lost that connection to the real world. Yeah, sure, you're playing as yourself in a lot of these games, like Assassin's Creed Black Flag, and Unity, and I believe even uh, um, Syndicate had first-person sections in the future. And yeah, they're trying to introduce this new female character into the new Assassin's Creed games, but I, I'm just... I don't know, I'm not. there's not much of a personality to her, or maybe I'm just not connecting with her on, and on any level. I think that Assassin's Creed really needs to just kind of do away with the, with the bigger future plots, because obviously those things aren't working well and I think that they're probably some of the worst parts of the game because the story isn't interesting especially in this one um the the the, the idea is cool but it's not it's not done very well it's not presented very well and I think that most of the missions in this game Assassin's Creed Unity are not that great uh there's a lot of assassination missions where you know, even though they gave you the freedom of doing how the assassinations how you want with a few of the different assassination things, there are actually a good amount of assassination quests where you are specifically told where to go, you have to be in a specific location, you know, you can't do it stealthily on one mission, which was really pissing me off, um, and there's just so much going on, and it's just like, why constrict me to one path now after we've done multiple paths throughout this entire game? Now it's just like, oh, you have to go this path or you fail. Oh, you have to do this or you fail. Oh, you have to chase this person into this room. You can't assassinate her any, you know, throughout the rest, the rest of the level because you have to assassinate her in this next room. And that's just so constricting. You know, I, I remember the, playing that original first assassination mission where you're going into that church and there's multiple entrances and there's some side things that you can do. And yeah, there is one that's later on for killing, um, what's his name, LeBlanc or whatever, Le, Le Chanch, whatever his name is. It's the rat looking guy with the hat. Uh, I know that that really narrows it down, Yummy. Um, but in that one, it, they kind of bring that back, where it's like, oh, you can pretend to be a guy who is going to be going to the guillotine. Oh, you can, you know, blend in with the crowd and hit him from the crowd. Oh, you can try and do an airstrike from here. Same thing with this church level, where it's like, you know, you can go into the confessional and you can stab him through the confessional thing, or you can just come out of a, ba a barrel of random leaves or whatever that that's hiding around, and. There, there's also another mission that, you know, they give you multiple places that you can hide in and, you know, try and get the guy. It's one of those things, though, where it's like, it could have been done a lot better. I, they wanted, they, I, I feel like if they had more time with this game, which obviously they didn't have enough time developing it, that they could have made each level have, like, this open and open-ended kind of thing to it, where you're the assassins, you're, you're choosing where they go. And I think they did that mostly with the online stuff. 
but I don't remember ever playing that and having fun with it. And I didn't get to play it recently because obviously the servers are, 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 gone, are gone. Let's talk about Arno as a character. I think he's very bland. I think that the Templar uh, assassin love story is... It's sewn together by very loose threads. It's it's not one of those things that's like, oh, there's a strong connection here. Nah, not really. The way that they wrote this story was very predictable, and I think that a lot of the elements that happen in it, like character development and character interactions, are very forced. Um, there's entire scenes in this game where Arno just gets away with things, you know? Like, he, he went off and killed, like, three major people in the Templars, and the assassins were like... Bad Arno, bad. Go find more information. And of course, why are the assassins being so reckless? I don't know. You also meet some historical characters from the French Revolution, like Napoleon Bonaparte. Um, but I, I don't think that's enough to justify having him in the story. Napoleon Bonaparte hardly does anything. He's hardly, you know, that interesting of a person in the story until you get to like. I think there's a DLC based around him. And, and by the, I mean, you get all the DLC for free, I believe, with this new version of the game that they're selling, or you get it for free now. Um, but all in all, there's just character development and characters in this game are not that great. Especially the guy who's constantly calling you Pisspot is a very forced nickname. I have no clue where that came from. Can I also say that the title screen for this game is at least two hours into the gameplay or something like that? It's after you escape the prison, and it's like. Oh, I guess now we're... Now we know the game, you know? It's not like Assassin's Creed 2, where it's like this fast, almost like a montage-type sequence leading up to the Assassin's Creed logo, or Assassin's Creed Brotherhood having this big battle at the beginning of it, and then, you know, getting the the, the logo, or, you know, having a revelations, you know, you're at your old man Ezio, you're going around this tower, and, you know, you, you're, you're, you're done with this tower, and you see Constantinople, or it's called the Byzantine Empire at that point, Byzantine at that point. <sighs> All I'm saying is, the introduction to this game is fine. It's not the best, but I think the really the thing that really holds this game back is its open world and the side missions you can do and the main story missions itself. I think the side missions, a lot of them are just cut paste, do this, do that, follow this person around for what seemed like hours at one point. And I stopped doing side missions after this one side mission where you're just following this old lady around like three times in a row. And she's just like, that man right there, kill him. And you, you know, assassin played him. He's a Templar guy. And it's like, this is so slow. This is so boring. Even the collectibles in this game aren't that much fun to find. There's nothing like super special about them. Syndicate did a good job with collectibles. You're collecting flowers. You're, con you're collecting beer cans. You're collecting, or bottles, beer bottles. You're going to each bar and collecting a bottle. You're going, you, you there's so much little things in it. A lot better than the feathers. This game is, I don't know. Just, just, it's just a weird collectible system. The AI in this game also seems a little broken still, including the enemy AI. Uh, there's times where I was, you know, in someone's peripherals pretty obviously and they didn't see me. Um, especially when I, like, just had assassinated someone and hid behind something and the guy turns around and sees a dead body and I just, like, go around the corner and shoot him with the crossbow thing. It's just, it's kind of unfortunate. Also, another thing about this game, and I'm going to go back to the story real quick. I know I'm a little bit all over the place on this one. But there's no reason to not kill the the police officers in this game. You know, the, the, the French police. There's just no reason not to. There's no wanted system in the game. And there's no real reason to not, you know, to, to kill Templars, but not kill official French police or whatever they're called. And even though I, when I went through my playthrough, I tried not to, you know, I tried to, you know, stay away from combat with the blues the entire time. It's just, it just, it's just not how it works all the time. And I really would have liked to seen a system like the wanted system come back in this game. Sure, it didn't work in three or four because they're too large of mass. But this game is a very, you know, specific area of, of France and a small other sub area outside of France that you can go to. And it's just this one map. It's a lot of buildings. It's a lot of corridors. There, there is no reason that there should not be a wanted system in this, especially if you have two separate factions in this game. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm going to say about that. One of the last things I want to talk about is the review bombs for this game. There's a lot of people who positively review bombed this game because they gave it away for free on Steam 
uh, during when Notre Dame was burning, and then Ubisoft gave like 500,000 euros or something to um, the restoration project to restore Notre Dame, which is nice. You know, I'm not going to lie. It's a nice gesture. It's very cool that they gave the game away, especially because it's based around in France, and you can literally explore Notre Dame or Notre Dame, depending on where you come from, in the game. What doesn't in, what doesn't justify the positive review bombing is the people who give it a positive review simply because it was free. And they can they can give away watch underscore dogs for free or knack for free as much as they want. I'm not going to change my review score because they gave it away for free. And the same goes for Assassin's Creed Unity. After playing through it again, I thought I would find something that I was missing, or maybe they fix all my problems with the game. But unfortunately, Assassin's Creed Unity is still just a bland, predictable, uninspired story with janky controls and just an uninteresting world in general. They have the French Revolution here, the time of guillotines and mass chaos, and they do nothing with it. You're doing these missions where you go to a mansion and you, you know, you go around these parties. Or you go around these soldiers ransacking the place. But there's never anything, like, centered on the people rioting, really. There's one level, like I was talking about with killing Latanche or Labanche, whatever his name was. Where there's actual rioters around and, you know, you're sifting through the crowd. Other than that, not much to do with the French Revolution at all, really. The boss battles in the game are also pretty piss poor. The ending boss fight really was just a, a build up to a great big nothing. Um, as I said in during the gameplay, you have f the the when the character knocks you down after you get a hit on him, you have three seconds to get up, but it takes you five seconds to get all the way back up. And it's just a little unfair. The same thing. I mean, not really the same thing, but just. Using what you have at your disposal for the middle of the of the game boss fight, and all the information like why are you we doing are we doing this boss fight in the middle of the game? This it, it didn't make sense story wise, and you if you played the game you know which boss fight I'm talking about. Also, another thing about the game is if you start a DLC, you cannot get out of that DLC until you've done a few missions in it, and it gives you the option to go into open world. We accidentally started a DLC because I thought it was like a side mission or something like that. Essentially, I got a really good weapon out of it, which I used the rest of the game because the game wasn't, you know, it, it wasn't um, properly, like, balanced for the DLC weapons. So I was able to rip and tear through the entire game, especially that middle boss fight, because I had the greatest weapon ever that they they just hand to you in the DLC. So in my opinion, when, once that DLC opens up, grab that weapon that's in the DLC. You won't need anything else throughout the rest of the campaign. Yeah, sure, upgrade your armor and stuff like that, but still... Upgrading your armor and stuff like that takes a while because they want you to buy Helix credits in order to buy clothing and stuff in the game that is better than what you can get. There are some items that are so high in price that you just you just buy just buy the Helix coins. That's all you need to do. It takes two seconds. Press pay on your PayPal. There you go. You got 500 Helix credits. Okay, now you can get this really good suit of armor or, you know, suit, assassin's outfit that does everything that your outfit does, but 10 times better. And that also is a, is a point of contention for me, which is why I can never can forgive this game, because they still have that stuff in the game, and the game is still so centered around you want, they wanting you to buy these Helix credits because they price some of the higher end gear so high. You're never gonna make that money. If you do all the side missions, you pickpocket everyone you come across, there's some, there's some outfits in this game that are like, whoo, how much? There's also some outfits in the game that are locked behind the Helix credits. What's up with that? So, yeah, to everyone who's giving this game a positive review bomb, have you actually played the game? Probably not. If you're giving this game a positive review bomb just because they gave it to you for free, what's stopping you from giving uh, all these other garbage games 10 out of 10s? You know, positive reviews. There's so many free games on Steam. Just type in free games. Look at the list that comes up. Most of it is just junk. Team Fortress 2 is at the top. Great game. I think Counter-Strike uh, is, is free too. Great. But just go through that list and see how many great games there are. I dare you to positively review all those games. I dare you. Anyways, that's enough of a rant for today. I think you all know where this game is going to go. Um, it, it The graphics do look nice in this game. 
Um, I'll give it that positive for that. I think that the voice actors did a good job with the stuff that they had. I do like how this game continues on from Assassin's Creed Rogue story. Um, obviously, I, I, I would have hoped, I would have wished to see Shay in this game at some point, but you know, <laughs> apparently those two lines can't cross that much. Um, but all in all, I do believe that, like, the story, the way that your assassinations go, the setup of the levels, stuff like that, just everything I've talked about is just, is just piss poor. And I think, also, this game did a really weird thing with how you assassinate someone and then you see their memories? Has that ever been a thing in these games? I don't think so up until this point. It never is a thing afterwards. It's just so, so weird how they went with this game. And as a next-gen experience, it was just another letdown in a long line of that early PS4, Xbox One era games. Okay. So, all in all, I think we're going to place this one in the D territory. That is right, it's getting a D. It's not the worst thing we've ever played because it's still playable. They did fix a lot of things about this game, but there's just so much to knock it for, in my opinion. What do you think of Assassin's Creed Unity? Obviously, the person who um, wanted us to play this in the first place, the Prey of Slasher, thinks of this game pretty highly. Me personally, I can't, I can't rate it any higher than a D. That is just sacrilegious. All right. Once again, thank you for listening. I'm Yummy the Ferret. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll see you guys next time.